In this video, I'd like to describe the relationship between activation energy and reaction rates. I'd like to remind you of this familiar energy diagram. On the y-axis, there's energy. On the x-axis is the progress of the reaction, say so at the beginning and at the end. And remind you that there's no absolute time indicated on this x-axis. And that for the reactants to be converted to products, this minimum amount of energy must be supplied to the reaction system. If this energy requirement isn't met, the reaction will not proceed, or if it's barely met, the reaction will proceed very slowly. So the more energy you supply to the reaction, the quicker it's going to proceed. Now there is an inverse relationship between how fast the reaction will go, in other words, the quickness of the reaction, and the activation energy, or the energy requirement. If the activation is very high, there's a large energy requirement, it's very likely the reaction will proceed slowly. If the re energy requirement is very low, the reaction will proceed much quicker. An analogy would be if we had a thousand people on bicycles, and let's say we had them all starting off at this point, and we asked them to climb this very steep hill. Well, in a particular period of time, let's say an hour, very few people will make it over that hill. Let's assume everybody's going to make it over the hill, but it's going to take everybody quite a while to make it over that hill. So the energy requirement on these folks is pretty high. It's kind of like reactants. The energy requirement is very large. It'll take longer for the reaction to proceed. But if we now have the same group of folks and we ask them to bicycle over this smaller hill, in that same period of time, in an hour, let's say, you'll get a lot more people over this hill than we did if we asked them to go over this much steeper hill. Because the energy demand or the energy requirement to go over this smaller hill is much less. It's pretty much the same thing for a reaction. The energy demand or energy requirement is lower statistically in a period of time, you'll get more reactants converted to products. Therefore, there is a inverse relationship between activation energy and reaction rate. Now, the only way that the activation energy for a particular reaction can be lowered is if a catalyst is added. So, the larger hill, the steeper hill here, the black line, is an uncatalyzed reaction. And the blue line is the same reaction, but if a catalyst was added. 